This video is to show you how to access the St. Matthews Library website, as well as how to log into your student's account and to change your password. The library website address is www.libib.com slash u slash St. Matthews. And St. is all written out. It's not S-T, it's S-A-I-N-T Matthews. I'd suggest that you type that into your browser and bookmark that website address um, so that you don't have to um, try and remember that later because that's kind of a, a long one there to access this account or I'm sorry this website now one thing I'm going to show you before I click on the patron login here is down here it says contact and we're going to click on that and it's going to open up your email program whichever you use and it's going to put my email address in um, the to field and um, my email address is schoollibrary at smls.org um, it should work for most email programs it may not necessarily um, even so this is my email address so if you ever have a question about anything on the website please just send me an email at that address and I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. So I just wanted to show you that before I go on to the next screen. Now we're going to click on patron login up here on the right hand side. Now the patron login for your student, their username is going to be, it's going to look like an email address, even if they don't necessarily have email. Only 5th through 8th graders have actual SMLS email addresses, but Libra requires that their username look like an email address. So, in that case, your student's um, login is going to be their first initial and last name at SMLS.org. So, for my daughter Grace, it's ghines at SMLS.org. Now, their password, if they're a brand new student, um, their default password is library with an exclamation point, all lowercase. So type in library exclamation point and click on login. Not need password, just login so that you can get into the next screen. There you go. Now, to be able to um, get into your profile to change your password, um, click on edit profile and then it brings up this screen. And there's just some basic information in here. Um, first name, last name. Now under email, where it says email, this is the student's username. This is not necessarily the email that they use for St. Matthews. This is the one, this is basically their username. So that email is a little confusing. This is actually their username. So that needs to stay the same. Um, this is these are fields that you technically can change this is one that I ask that you don't change because this is their username now a notification email is the um, address email address of a parent that um, this email address I have gotten from the school office if there is a different email address other than the one that you have given to the office and you would like to change it to something else if you'd rather have your email in here be your work email or your spouse's email instead of yourself that is totally fine you can change that in here to something else you don't even have to let me know um, that is perfectly fine in this case my daughter grace is in seventh grade and so she has um I can put in more than one notification email address in here. And this is her actual St. Matthew's email address. It's just, it's the same as her username because she doesn't have any siblings with the first same initial, same first initial. Now, this is a nice field because Libib automatically has notifications that go to any email address in this field three days before the books are due. Um, I think it's the day after the books are overdue, might be a day or two, and then a week after the books are overdue. So you get some automatic 
notifications when books are coming up as well as when they're overdue. And I put the student's email in there as well so that they are getting those notification emails also, not just the parents. That's just fifth through eighth grade. The rest of this information here is not, you don't need to fill any of this in. Um, it's not that necessary for their library account. If you do make any changes in any of these fields for the um, notification email, um, please just click on edit and that will change any changes that you've made in there. Now down here below is a password. This is where you can change the password. If you're a brand new student, I would suggest that you do change it to something else other than library exclamation point because every new account that is the default. So there are many accounts at the beginning that have the same password. So I would suggest that you change it to something else. So in that case, um, change it to whatever you'd like under new password and then under confirm new password, type it in twice. And then under current password, you are going to type in library exclamation point, all lowercase, and then just click on change password. And now it's changed it to a new, oh, that's right. Oh, that was, that was a great example. It has to be eight characters. <laughs> so that was a mistake on my part. It has to be eight characters. So I was going to change it to something else and now I'll, I'll, there. <laughs> so now I changed the password. There we go. Password updated successfully. It says up here at the top. So that is how you can change the password. That is all I'm going to cover in this video. I have other videos that you can also view regarding how to put books on hold as well as how to renew existing books that are checked out. Thank you.